Hello students, welcome to Shore of Sir Classes. My name is Professor Imadri Datta. In today's lecture, we'll talk about rational expectation. So, in today's video, we will talk about rational expectation. So, so far we have just talked about the basics of Phillips curve, how we derive Phillips curve equation, then we showed what is adaptive expectation and what is disinflation and how we arrive at sacrifice ratio. So, first I will write down the basic adaptive expectation equation in terms of Phillips curve which is like this the inflation rate depends on previous year's inflation rate So, inflation depends on previous year inflation rate, which is inflation inertia, and then uh, cyclical unemployment, and also on V, V term, which says supply shock. <coughs> now, as you can see, here there is very less scope for government to intervene. Suppose government make a policy resolution that they want to increase the money supply in the economy. So as a result, what will happen? As as government has increased the money supply, so as a result, the Phillips curve moves to a higher Phillips curve, say at this level, or it will be bigger than I say, suppose on this Phillips curve, or Phillips curve 1, we can show that the relationship between cyclical unemployment and inflation is always negative. <coughs> now, due to increasing Phillips curve, what we can see, in, in order to keep the unemployment rate at this level, the Phillips curve can be shifted to this level, given the increase in money supply. Now, in case of rational expectation, there is one scope for government to increase intervene and to make and to make effective policy resolution so that the Phillips curve will not go upward rather it will get back to the initial Phillips curve so here as you can see if you want to decrease inflation if you want to decrease inflation the unemployment rate is likely to in increase so the basic problem with adaptive expectation is that when you reduce inflation, unemployment rate is likely to increase because they are inversely related to each other. Now, this can be compensated by changing the expected inflation rate. How, how, how this takes place? I am rubbing it off so that you guys can see. What I'm doing now, if government say announces, if the government announces before work that they will decrease the inflation rate by say, let's say either fiscal policy or monetary policy, it let's say for the timing we'll achieve due to increasing money supply. Okay, by reducing money supply, what we'll do? 
will reduce the government will reduce the inflation rate now this will lead to increasing unemployment given this adaptive expectation formula but there are people like Muth and Lukacs they proposed a theory called rational expectation according to them if government announces this change this policy change before work then people will take that thing into account and they will change their expectation accordingly so the expected expectation the expected inflation sorry which we assume to be the previous year's inflation will not be the case here because expected inflation will not merely depend on this term but there will be a lot of other factors like say uh, fiscal policy or say monetary policy so here the expected inflation will change accordingly now this way Lukács and Mo they think we can avoid the problem of sacrifice ratio or sacrifice in GDP which was taking place in the earlier model so we call it painless disinflation here also we are reducing inflation but it is not pain it is not painful which was the case with sacrifice ratio or with adaptive expectation now for this first there has to be two prerequisites which has to be met in order for this to be effective one is the government has to announce the policy before and they have to be credible that they will follow a fixed based rule fixed based rule means that is all you can call it rule based policy which says that government will not deviate from what they have announced suppose government has announced that they will increase the inflation or reduce the inflation by this person so the people will take that information available information into account and they will set their expected inflation accordingly so first criteria is that government has to be credible that is they have to follow a rule based policy later on people like Kidlin and Prescott and they also mm, explain this with their model that why discretionary monetary policy actually is not very effective rather it leads to inconsistency so for the time we'll just talk about this mm, just keep it very simple uh, so government has to be credible rule based policy they have to follow and they will announce it before work okay and the second is the people who are living or the producers for producers or let's say of consumers they have to take this an announcement into account while forming their expectation so producers consumers they will take this information into account so they will set their expected what will I say the expected inflation accordingly okay so if these two requisites are met then only an effective demand, demand management policy can take place right say the problem we are facing while disinflation that is what we 
so in case of adaptive expectation that if you want to reduce the inflation rate you have to sacrifice some level of some percentage of percentage of gdp or total output here we can say that there is no such po possibility because the people who are living in the country, let's say the consumers or producer, they take the demand management policy announcement before what they take it into account. So they set their expected inflation accordingly so that the sacrifice ratio, which is known as sacrifice ratio, is small. Okay, so what is rational expectation? In brief, so far we have just talked about two things. There are two requisites. First have to be met in order it to be successful. The first one is the government has to be credible. They, ha they have to announce the policy changes which are taking place. Either it is fiscal policy or monetary policy before work. And then the second requisite is the people, those who are living, whether it is farm or a consumer, household, they have to take that information into account, their account, so that they can change their expected inflation accordingly. Okay, so now, expected inflation will not merely depend on the previous year's inflation, rather it will depend on various other information. So we'll explain this in terms of a diagram so it will be better for your understanding. So here, as you can see, given this equation, if people, if government announces the policy changes before war or P and people take that information into account and they follow rational expectation assumption of they follow this expectation then they will form their expectation accordingly and they can not only reduce the sacrifice ratio but they can like avoid the sacrifice ratio totally by keeping the unemployment level at natural rate so Phillips curve ships left foot in case of rational expectation and the price level Falls. This is our objective to reduce inflation, to reduce price level. In case of adaptive expectation, we are hmm, we saw that due, in order to reduce this, the unemployment rate was increasing because people did not take into account the demand management policies or its announcement. But here we do not say that the val expected value of inflation depends on previous year's inflation. Rather, we say people take into account all the information available. In the economy so the change in price can be effective or the reduction in inflation can be effective by keeping the output level and the unemployment level at the same rate this is known as painless disinflation this is known as painless disinflation so We'll write U here, we'll write P here. So, this is rational expectation. So, in this lecture, we talked about rational expectation and how it is different from adaptive expectation.
in the previous video we will conclude our discussion on Phillips curve with the difference between the long run Phillips curve and short run Phillips curve and what is the difference between their elasticities there is often a question comes in the exam that in most of the exam that why which one either it is short run Phillips curve or it is long run Phillips curve which one is more elastic we'll explain that answer in the next video for the time being thank you for watching this video if you guys have any doubt please give your suggestions or write down your questions at, on this phone number i'm giving 9836793068 i'm again repeating the number 9836793068 you can call, call whatsapp me on this number thank you for watching me this video have a nice day ahead.